Hey, it's Tom here from The Run Testers in, with the next video in our partnership series with Coros. In this video, we're going to look at a new set of features that Coros is releasing across all of their watches apart from the Pace 1, and it's free to anybody that owns any of those watches. Those features are designed to take Coros hardware and software up a level with a load of performance insights for runners looking for information on types of training they should be doing, as well as the types of recovery that they should be getting. So let's jump in and see what EvoLab is all about. So we're going to be looking into the new EvoLab training features, um, the advanced guidance that you get from performance and fatigue to various other training factors that you need to know about if you're interested in getting more advanced stats from your training. Over the last few weeks, we've been testing all these features out. So we're going to be taking a detailed look into those features and discussing how they can be used for your training. So the new EvoLab features are going to be coming to almost all of the watches in the Coros range. That's the uh, Pace 2, the Apex, the Apex Pro and the Vertix. And if you own the original Pace, you'll still get the features within the Coros app, just not on the watch itself, just due to hardware limitations. Right now, uh, it's only available to kind of a thousand kind of public testers, but all being well, it will be rolled out to all watches around mid-June. So when you get the new features, you'll see in the Coros app a new dashboard that gives you a load of these kind of new training insights. But to get those kind of loaded, to populate those stats, you're going to need to do seven days of running covering about 150 minutes of steady uh, road running on a reasonably flat ground. So once you've done your kind of 150 minutes, you'll see these stats populate within the app and on your watch, and you'll see some of them update after each run from then on, but there's some longer term stats in the app that will kind of update over time. The watches are kind of using their onboard sensors to kind of determine all these stats, mainly using the heart rate sensor, and this is done when you do activities in the run or track run mode. It's currently not supported for trail running. The stats you're going to get, we'll just list quickly here, we're going to dive into them in plenty more detail, but you're going to get an insight into your base fitness, load impact and overall fatigue, uh, a race predictor, your marathon level, your running performance for your last run, the training focus of your run, and then the intensity distribution for your training blocks. Uh, we've obviously been testing this out for the last few weeks. Let's dive into those stats in a bit more detail. First up, training load, and this is a simple score rating the load placed on the body by a workout, and it's based on heart rate and using kind of the classic Trimp model for training load, and you'll see it in your post-run stats on the watch and in the app. So next up is base fitness, and this is your fitness level based on the last six weeks of training. So a higher number indicates you have the capacity to do more training and more intense training. So next we have training load. This is your seven day training load. So you'll see this in both the watch and the app. Uh, in this case, a higher number means a higher load for that seven day period. In addition to that seven day training load, you're also gonna get a stat called load impact. And that's basically the past seven days weighted average training load. Now this measures the amount of strain that's brought to your body over short term training and a higher value means a higher impact is introduced to your body and that will limit your performance due to tiredness. Basically here, your load impact will go down if you take more rests and up if you train more. Then we have fatigue, and this is basically where your load impact and your base fitness meet. This shows how your body is basically handling your recent training load based on your base fitness. So from this, you can see if your training level is effective or perhaps you're overdoing it, or perhaps if you're you know, scaling back your training while maintaining your fitness in order to peak for a race. Next up, we've got training effect. This is found in your post-run stats and it will tell you the kind of benefit you're getting from a training run in terms of the aerobic and anaerobic training effect. Okay, so next up is training focus and this is linked to training effect. So different kinds of training runs can improve your fitness in different ways. And this tells you if your run was easy, base, tempo, threshold, VO2 max or anaerobic. Base runs stay in lower heart rate zones and work on your aerobic fitness while intervals will see you in higher heart rate zones, mainly boosting your anaerobic fitness. 
After runs, you'll also see a breakdown of your time spent in different threshold zones. So next we've got threshold zones. And now these are pace zones that are equivalent to different, the different training focuses and they're personalized to you. So they add more depth to what you get just with the HR zones. There are six pace zones that equate to different effort levels for you, ranging from easy aerobic plodding to all out anaerobic sprinting. Uh, and then you have your four week intensity distribution. So getting the balance between all these different kinds of training runs is absolutely key to improving your fitness in a way that reduces your risk of injury. So this four week uh, distribution is shown in a really nice pie chart on the watch that kind of breaks down your runs into kind of easy, medium and hard efforts. So you can see that you are getting a good balance with plenty of easy stuff in there rather than just going all out all the time. Recovery timer, this is something that we're fairly familiar with. This will tell you how much time you need to recover after recent training, up to 96 hours. When you're between 90 and 100% recovered, you're ready to go for hard training, while anything between 30% and 89% means that you can go for those easier sessions, anything below that, and you should probably put your feet up for a while. Next up is marathon level, and this is using data like your workout history, VO2 max, and threshold zones, and this will rate how well you could do in a flat road marathon. This will give you a predicted time and a level out of 100. So another feature is running performance, uh, and this is where your Chorus watch will rate your performance in a run relative to your marathon level, uh, and that will give you a rating between 8% and 120% of the marathon level. If it's below 100%, that might be because of factors like poor sleep affecting the way that you're running on that given day. If you're over 100%, it would suggest that you're in a good condition for running, uh, but this only applies to road runners and track runners. Evo Lab takes kind of all those stats and actually uh, gives you race predictions for 5k, 10k, half marathon and the marathon, uh, along with the actual pace you need to hit for those target times um, in either miles or kilometers, depending on your preference. You can also actually update these manually with a recent race time just to get even more accuracy out of the feature. Another stat we're pretty familiar with, we get running VO2 max here as well, and that is using data like heart rate and pace to give you an overall VO2 max estimate. In this next section, we're going to take some of those features that jump out from Evo Lab and tell you how we might use them and why we're particularly interested in what they might bring to our running training. So first up, Mike, one of the ones that's jumped out for you was Race Predictor. What was it about Race Predictor that you think is going to be really interesting to look at as we go deeper into the Chorus Evo Lab features? Uh, I mean, I think it's a, for me, I think it's a feature that most runners are going to kind of gravitate towards. I mean, who doesn't like to get an idea of how they might do in a race and obviously actually see what kind of pace maybe they need to hit um, to achieve that time as well. And I think what was interesting for me is, you know, is where is that information being taken from? And obviously it will be things like um, your workout history, but also it's looking at stuff like um, training loads, um, marathon level, the running performance metrics that um, Chorus is looking to deliver here as well. But I think what's really interesting for me is that it's looking at specific runs that will can kind of influence certain distances so um runs over 30 kilometers will kind of influence um that marathon prediction time um if you're kind of training for 10k times or half marathons which i kind of am trying to focus on at the moment um it will look at kind of 60 minute um threshold pace runs and that will influence um those predicted times and hopefully give you you know a better idea of what kind of time you should be looking at and also what kind of pace you should be looking at to kind of you know help strategize for your race. So Nick, of all of us, you're the person who's run a marathon most recently and you've got some sort of first-hand <laughs> experience of how this has looked because you've been using Evo Lab for a while as well to track your stats. So how did how does it look on the watch? Yeah, so it's pretty close to my um, actual times. And what I think it actually really tallies up well with is uh, me as a runner, which is I tend to focus more on marathons. So when I have a, quite an accurate marathon prediction in there, or even if I manually enter it in, I can see that actually the targets I should be looking at for 5K and 10K are probably faster than uh, what I've done. And that really tallies up with the kind of runner I am in that I do tend to focus on the marathon a bit more. This kind of gives you some insight in what I could maybe do over 5K and 10K um, if I put a bit more effort into those as opposed to just looking at the long runs all the time. But into having done a marathon and a 10K quite recently, I was pretty impressed by how close these race predictions are to the times I managed to log. So Tom, I know something we've talked about in the past, sort of managing how you kind of build out your training over a kind of period or a training block and managing recovery has been something that has been a little bit tricky. So recovery is something that you picked up on as a metric that was going to be particularly interesting. 
Yeah, I, I think um, I, this is a really useful stat to have recovery because um, I, I know probably people have someone like Nick who's got a very specific training plan you probably understand the recovery that you should be getting but for, with the way that I train and the, the number of times I go running the week can vary massively so I don't really pay a lot of attention to the the kind of the, the, the recovery that I need as well as I should do so um, the new Evolab features include this recovery tool which gives you insight into how much recovery you should be getting so that will give you information on whether you're ready to train easy whether you're really ready to go out and hit hit training hard uh, and it, it goes up to 96 hours of, of, of recovery time so it'll it'll give you that uh, barrier for uh, knowing how long you're meant to be um, recovering for and I think really interestingly it contextualizes the numbers as well it's just not it's not just numbers alone it will give you like a like a human comment to tell you how you should approach your training next time out, right? Yeah, so it'll it'll give you you get a percentage basically of how ready you are for training. So if you if you're you've got a hundred percent um readout on your on your watch, it's basically saying you're ready to train hard. But it'll also give you a little message underneath like telling you you're ready for hard training. So there's no there's no way you can be confused about the information that the, the watch is giving you. So Nick, in addition to that recovery information that we might be familiar with from elsewhere, there's a new stat which is fatigue. Now, can you explain a little bit about what fatigue is and why you're particularly interested in this this new metric? Yeah, sure. So fatigue is kind of, I think for me, would be the key stat of the kind of base fitness, load impact and fatigue trio. Um, so it takes into account all your training, not just your running, uh, these stats. And what it basically says is your base fitness is kind of what you can handle, what your fitness is based over the last six weeks. You've got your load impact over the last seven days and your fatigue is basically a quick indicator of how well you are handling that load based on your fitness. You get a nice little dial on the watch with a pointer to show kind of where you're at in terms of how well you're handling that training. So if you're in right in the sweet spot, you'll find it's optimized. You're getting fitter. You're not working too hard. Uh, and if you're starting to find that actually your load is too high for your level of fitness, you'll see it go to excessive or high, something like that, your training load. So you can kind of get away with a high training load for a little bit, but you really don't want to be an excessive. It just raises your risk of injury. It's going to prove counterproductive in terms of actually making you fitter and better able to perform. And then what I really like about it is that when you do start scaling down your training, perhaps tapering for a run, you'll see that your load impact goes down and your fatigue drops into kind of a performance zone because your base fitness hasn't started to drop yet because you're still training. Um, and it just shows that, yeah, you're ready now. You're, you know, you've got the base fitness in place. You've reduced your load. Your fatigue is lower and you are ready to go out and smash a you know, hard run in a race somewhere. So you're also getting some really nice graphs on the watch that represent these stats in a really sort of easy to read way, right? Yeah, you can get all this data in the app as well, of course, but I really like the little mini graphs that you see on the watch that are really clear, color-coded, that show your kind of seven-day training load of kind of with a bar chart that shows you know, a higher bar means you put more training load in on that day. And then the four-week load shows like a pie chart and you'll see how much of the pie is spent to kind of easy training, medium training, hard training. So you can just kind of, you know, see it adjust over time throughout a training block. So there are certain points when you go, well, I'm pushing really hard at this over this four week period, knowing that I don't have a race coming up, I'm really getting the fitness in place. And hopefully you start to see maybe a bit more easy stuff creep in as you do build into a race day. So there's lots of different ways, you know, if, you, if you're really into this stuff, you can spend hours looking at these graphs and stuff um, and just, you know, keeping an eye on your training load and making sure you're keeping it in the sweet spot for um, to ensure you're being productive. That pie chart visualization actually is really nice. You know, most of us or many of us who haven't got a coach perhaps are quite guilty of going out and running in that kind of no man's land of too fast to be recovery, too slow to actually make a training impact. And this will give you a good at a glance view of whether or not you're doing too much of that kind of middle no man's land stuff, right? It's really simple. Exactly, yeah. It's, exactly. it's one look thing, you see it on the watch and, um, and it's just nice. It's really engaging, I find, to just have a quick look and go, yeah, good, everything's in order. Or, oh no, I've, I've done 50% hard training for the last four weeks. I'm in real trouble. So I know one thing that uh, you're really interested in, uh, Kieran, is that taking a more holistic view of your training. And this is where maybe running performance can come in, covering off some of the stuff that maybe you won't get for a traditional training load measurement. Yeah, I think I'm interested to see how the running performance stat pans out because if I come in and I've done a run that I come back and say I get sort of 85, 95% of my performance one day, I want to know why that might be. And it will really be, for me, a trigger to go and look at other areas of my my life. You know, have I slept well? Have I eaten right? Am I stressed? Um, you know, I might sort of go and dive into my aura ring stats and see what other factors around my life might have affected that day's run. Equally, if I come back and I've run really well and I'm kind of overdoing it what did I do that day before of what have I done this week 
in terms of my overall load that means that I'm going out and I'm running at my best. Have I have I eased back or have I got my training structure for that week right? So it's for me, I think this will be a really nice stat as a trigger to go and dive deeper into other metrics. So there you have it. That's our kind of whip through the new Evo Lab feature from Coros. There's a lot of exciting stuff in there. We're going to have a lot of fun going away and testing, getting deeper into some of those stats. We will be following up later on with more videos about how we've used those, about what they all mean, and giving you a more in-depth kind of look at how you can use them in your training. But for now, we've been the Run Testers. It's been nice to talk to you about these new features. Don't forget to like and subscribe to get those videos when they come. Uh, yeah, and we will see you again soon for the next in our kind of Chorus Partnership videos on the Run Testers. Thanks for watching.